Welcome to Your Infinite Health. Are you getting older? Are you feeling it? How would you like to do that in reverse? We're your host, Dr. Tripp, and Lene. We've run an integrative medicine practice for 13 years. Together, we have 60 years of combined experience helping clients. We've helped tens of thousands achieve success in health and live longer, happier lives. In this show, we'll cover peer-reviewed and evidence-based integrative approaches to creating the health you've always wanted. We also share professional experience we see in the field every day. So if you're ready to feel, look, and live your best life, you're in the right place. Welcome to your Infinite Health Podcast. You got that microphone fixed there, dear? <laughs> it's there. Great. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Messing around with it. Yeah, I um, want to reconsider these things. What, your microphone? Yeah, these things are... You don't like your microphone? Well, if it works, I like it. <laughs> well, when you put your mouth on it like you're supposed to, it works. Yeah, but I see everybody else. They don't have to e be eating their microphone. I know. I think they might have like a dude that's got one of them. What you, a boom mic? A like boom over, mic? over the no ceiling? And we could get a boomer. <laughs> and he you could hold a mic. You already have one. I do. Oh, oh. <laughs> That was like the joke. You are my <laughs> boomer. You're hilarious. Speaking of jokes, I have I have a pretty funny one. Oh. What happens when you give an ant growth hormone? You give an ant growth hormones? Mm -hmm. What happens when you give an ant growth hormones? Uh, I don't know. What? Tolerance. 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 Oh. Oh, <laughs> tolerance. Tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right. there. Yeah, I know. So we, we don't have a guest today, so it's just me and you, but my daughter, Laura, sent me some drama I thought we could talk about. It's like there's this cat fight between Lane Norton, PhD, a bunch of women, and Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I don't follow any of these people, but I guess my daughter does, and she had sent me this Instagram post by this Lane Norton who was saying that he recently got lambasted by this menopause doctor Mary Claire Harver and um Haver. Haver, sorry, and other women because they I don't know if they misconstrued what he was saying, but he got really defensive. <laughs> I think his stance was essentially that and I'm sure he's somebody's going to correct me if I'm wrong, but was basically saying that menopause hormones, menopause and lack of hormones or something doesn't impact fat loss, that you that fat loss is impacted by lifestyle. Well, no, he didn't say that. He, he was actually in the context of the analysis he did, the nutritional analysis he did. He said he said that it did, but it didn't obviate, it didn't actually oh, obviate here, the gonna, effects gonna, of nu nutritional effects that could be obtained I'm gonna quote by exactly lifestyle what, change. Yeah, he got in he's saying he got in trouble for saying that hormones and menopause don't really change what works for fat loss and, and all this other drama that ensued. But, you know, he's relying on the data and then he goes into... So I think he, he 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 modified that in the body of the the information he that he provided, which was really great information based on his PhD. I I guess that knowledge base was really really great information. So what was it though? Like well, he was talking about the I mean the energy energy use and basic metabolic rate and all of the all of the things that impact calorie consumption in the body as well as what can happen with the hormonal change in in a, a female body so and, and all of it, it really he, he did kind of modify that uh, that initial statement by by actually confirming that there is because we we know uh, i mean we actually know and i i think that may be what dr haver was was talking about is that we know that the hormones the absence of the hormones that occur postmenopausally uh, in females, actually, there are really there's really great studies, um, basic science studies showing the effects of estradiol, of uh, progesterone, of uh, testosterone, all of these all, all of these major hormone players that as women enter the uh, menopausal age, what happens is that the mitochondria don't consume and are not as as active, and so it 
causes a change not only in body composition but in in the way they u- utilize energy molecules. So a really really interesting debate. But uh, I think the 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 bottom line the bottom line, and I think I think what finally came out there is that yes, there's a there's a change in the metabolism. There's a, that is it is so that it's really necessary to have those hormones to optimize the uh, metabolism. And that's what we do. And like Dr. Haver, I think the, the, the real information there is that, yeah, many women, even though they try to modify their lifestyles, which is a very difficult thing to do. And, and it doesn't uh, have to be difficult. No, I mean, the mindset is very important there, obviously. And I I don't want to diverge on that, but at the same time, for for those individuals who may not have that discipline and 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 be able to have the accountability uh, to to really initiate and maintain that lifestyle change, I think the knowing that knowing that there is a change that can be mitigated by by the optimization of hormones and the metabolism uh, by what Dr. Haver probably does and what we do at Infinite Health. I think that helps those women achieve that uh, more youthful body composition that get them closer to where they want to be by using that optimization process. And I have to support, I have to support uh, Dr. Haver in the fact that, you know, and I, I don't know if that was mentioned in that uh, discussion or not, but we know that not only does it, not only does it enhance mitochondrial function and make our mitochondria uh, healthier and, and maybe more resilient to damage, but at the same time, it actually, in, in our practice, we know that the, the reduction in the uh, whole body inflammation that occurs and the biological age reversal that, that, that actually takes place with, with the utilization and the optimization of, of hormones and metabolism uh, makes a huge difference in a sense of well-being and, and the, ability to, the ability to age uh, more gracefully, so to speak. And it reverses biological age. I mean, as we use uh, an epigenetic, epigenetic uh, biological clock test that, that actually documents biological age reversal, we, we have an average of about 11 years age reversal with uh, good hormone optimization and sometimes even up to 15, 20 years. But it's, it's not just hormone optimization. Mm-hmm. It's the well, light, you know, it's right. being mindful about making smart nutritional choices. It's about engaging in uh, regular physical activity. It's about getting the mind to support what the goals right. are. Cool. So it's not just hormones. My but bad. It, Well, for clarification, but it also seemed like that guy is saying that a menopausal woman can lose fat without having hormone replacement therapy. Yeah, effectively they can. Okay. And and they can. He's correct. He's correct. The the data is there. It's very well supported. And, but uh, I think what Dr. Haver is saying is that, uh, that the changes and, and not knowing her practice or, what, really uh, not knowing anything about either of yeah, these people because we these don't people. follow other people but uh, um, I, my I, daughter brought it to our attention yeah it would be so good... so that being said i mean she may be also aware of these of these significant other um other pathways that are being um effectuated and that have such a good effect on um on age reversal or aging in 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 and of itself. Well, I don't even think she was focused on age reversal so much as she's just focused on menopause. N- hormones for menopause. Right. I think is her niche. So your niche is age reversal. I don't think any so of these other two people encu- are focused on that. Right. It's much more encompassing, but at the same time it's it's really it's really interesting that uh, this this debate or this conversation came up and uh, I think the data that uh, uh, what's his name, Doctor Lane Norton? No, Doctor Norton. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the information that Doctor Norton. Um, I mean, put he's in relying that, heavily yeah, on put in data. That. Yeah. Don't I, hate him. Hate the data. I think is what he's saying. <laughs> yeah. So he says he's just the messenger, right? And that's true. So we and we know this. We know this. I'm sure uh, Doctor Haver knows this too. But uh, I think she's she sees the the difference 
and the quality of life difference that uh, is effectuated maybe just by the hormones. I, I myself know that that it's not just the hormones, like you were saying, but that there are multiple, you know, minor players in the domain, in this same domain that is, that are necessary to enhance hormonal, hormonal uh, efficacy. So uh, the effectiveness, that, that being said, the effectiveness of the hormones is subsidized by many cheerleader hormones and uh, metabolics that are, that are necessary to really to really ramp up the uh, results that we see with with hormones so it's not just the hormones it is there are multiple players as we know the human body is an incredible thing that uh, that has so much potentiality and so many so many interactions with different pathways that that it's really it's so interesting to see the uh, um, the differences with just not with just taking the horm hormones but but expanding that into these other domains that really enhance and and uh, and maximize their effects. Yeah. So, I guess the ultimate synopsis is they're both right. Oh uh, yeah, they're both right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you people yeah. just get along? <laughs> We're all on the same team here. Right? And I, I think what I'm doing here is tossing into the the mix the, the the fact that there is not just one or the other i mean and as you really uh, summarized there just a few minutes ago i think the it, it's it, knowing knowing that the uh, how our body works and then knowing all of the other little pathways that are involved in in making the results of just one pathway so much better are really really important and how that affects our genome individually and how we can actually look at that individually and and use that at our behest i mean the optimization nutritional optimization much of the information that dr lane was talking about basically um that is different for each and every one of us so right as we as as we capitalize on the human genome project that was completed in 2001 and the utilization of uh, that information and how our nutrition and the components of our nutrition uh, interact with our genome, that is in inherently much more specifically important than, than just, just the, you know, just one thing or the other. And I think we're looking at, I mean, when you get down to the, the real molecular biologics of how we consume our nutrients and how we utilize those nutrients, and uh, it really depends on what our mom and dad gave us at the end of the day wait what yeah i thought 80 percent is lifestyle and that the genome was not the major influencer well the genome is what processes it. lifestyle that, that statement is actually a reflection of how the lifestyle is impacting the genome so ultimately for each individual it is the genome so on an, an n of one basis it is the genome that is translating the lifestyle actions on itself. Oh, that, that makes everybody sound like a victim no. of their genome. No, it's a victim, <laughs> victim of their mindfulness and their decisions. Okay, but not if the genome is or driving. The you just said that the genome is drives the behavior. So if the genome drives the no, behavior. No, be oh, behavior is a. No, you're going yeah, much further. Uh, I think the it, the genome is there and receives the and receives the information that our behavior provides it. Okay, so the behavior controls. So yeah, it's the it's the behavior and your mindfulness, right? And it's the law of thinking, right? And the law of empowered uh, empowered perspective. For more information about the law of thinking and the law of empowered perspective, please get the book called Think and Live Longer, available on Amazon. Oh my God! <laughs> Shameless marketing. I, I know. If I don't do it, nobody else will. <laughs> okay, that was an advertisement break. I guess. I, I don't know. At any rate. Um, uh, so yeah, so so it's it's realistically, and we and we have a lot of that information that's available now. We we actually there are there are uh, corporations out there that have uh, taken um, artificial intelligence, combined it with uh, with individual genomes to look at what are good 
good nutritional practices for those individuals. And that information, albeit it's not really that expensive to get those things, but I think uh, that would ultimately drive drive a better outcome for individuals, I believe, than uh, well, than, having that information than a statistical statistical um, pathway, which you know, in which you know, basically all of our science has been based on is statistical analysis of uh, the impact of different different nutritional pathways on uh, on a, a population of individuals it hadn't been done on an n of one so basically taking the genome taking the you know whole genome sequencing and then applying applying what has been you know what's being supplied to the body on that genome and watching for its outcomes yeah and so we actually have those testing kits available right you want to talk about no <laughs> <laughs> okay that's for another day another day <laughs> all right anything else they should know yeah so there are a couple other things that are uh, really important about that uh about the strength and that that they uh that they were talking about a little bit and i think that's the the changes that occur also the changes that occur with menopause show a uh, an increase in in Adipose tissue development, so visceral and peripheral adipose tissue develop more often, and and as we age, both men and women, there's this uh, this thing called sarcopenia of aging, and that sarcopenia is is a progressive muscle loss, and so the uh, studies into the studies into actually the uh, loss of musculature have shown that the the kind of the stem cells that surround the the muscles, the uh, the peripheral cells are called like satellite cells they they basically they basically decrease in number and become less and less active in the absence of estradiol and testosterone and so as as we replace those as we replace those hormones at uh, optimal levels what happens is those uh, those satellite those satellite cells actually actually mature and multiply and provide a, an increase uh, an increase of musculature in in the areas that uh, are necessary and to maintain maintain or actually improve musculature even despite uh, well there's not an absence of uh, estradiol and, but despite the progression of age it actually can reverse that those effects so that's I think a really important uh, important thing to know about the hormone replacement and, and optimization, but also, uh, as many people know, bone density uh, bone density declines at the same time, and that's prevented by both uh, testosterone and estradiol uh, replacement in women. So uh, these are really important things. But I think uh, inflammation. There's also a significant increase in inflammation in the absence of estradiol, and, and the basic science studies have shown uh, in the absence uh, of the estradiol and progesterone and that, that cycling that occurs normally in women, what happens is that the immune system, who the immune system, our cellular immune system, actually actually doesn't behave as well anymore, and they actually start producing inflammatory molecules like uh, IL-6, IL-1, uh, these, uh, these inflammatory molecules, tumor necrosis factor, all of these, all of these molecules that are uh, lymphocytes produce uh, to enhance inflammation in normal inflammatory situations, they actually just start spewing out because they don't have the cycling anymore. And uh, interestingly, that compromises the ability of the immune system uh, to actually surveil our bodies and prevent uh, cancer cell occurring and not being taken care of. So these are all important factors that uh, that occur in the absence of an optimized optimized uh, system uh, and physiology. So these are, yeah, those, those little additive things are really important uh, and, uh, and are supported by both of these individuals. Uh, I think it's really interesting to, to see the uh, complementary information that, are, that both of them put. Cool, cool. But, you know, I think both, like you said, both of the individuals here that are debating, I think there's an emo certainly an emotional con content. It's like a there. Burger King McDonald's fight going on uh, right. between doctors. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. Burger King but McDonald's it gives us fodder right. for our podcast. So keep it up. Yeah. yeah. Um, Great stuff. Great stuff. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I hope y'all found this informational, somewhat entertaining. 
And until next time. Thanks for subscribing to Your Infinite Health. I'm Dr. Tripp. And I'm Lynne. Until next time, feel it, look it, and live it.